Hello, I'm Tim Cockrell from Wise Media, and I'm here with Mr. Andre Oyen from CETA. He is the director um, of business development, biometrics, government, and service. And uh, thank, thank you very much for joining me, first of all. Um, interested to, to know about CETA's take on the whole self-service check-in culture that seems to be taking over the world's airports. Obviously, bringing efficiencies, but I'm sure there are also some some uh, concerns that needed to be addressed as well. As well, could you paint us a picture of, of how the self-service check-in culture is developing? And, and okay, at, at the moment. Well, maybe maybe starting with where we are today, and and yeah. CETA is well placed. We uh, we run uh, surveys amongst our customers every year. So we see a growing number of passengers really embracing self-service. And that goes from self-service uh, kiosk check-in, more and more uh, home-based check-in, where people check in from home and just arrive at the airport with their uh, printed boarding pass. Uh, obviously, at the other end, when getting onto the plane, more and more you see little gates showing up where passengers just can board without meeting an agent which is very convenient for the passenger which is also very cost effective for the airline mm -hmm. uh, but with growing passenger numbers sooner or later the whole environment will kind of reach the limits of what's acceptable and reasonable because one consequence of really taking self-service to the limits is that the airline and the airport don't know their passengers anymore. Okay, and that's right. where the risk comes in the system because it becomes very easy to swap identities, it becomes very easy to duplicate border passes and nobody will notice until the passenger arrives at the boarding gate where there's time pressure and where it's very often too late to take action. And that is where identity management is really becoming on the agenda of the whole industry. And identity management in the large sense of the world. It's about making sure passengers have proper documentation, they have a valid travel document, a passport. It's about making sure they have the right boarding pass, they are at the right place at the right time. And it's more than ever making sure that the person is who it claims to be. And so so would, could you describe it as the, the, the other end of the e-gate system? Because the e-gates were in place to, on arrival, as you say, at the end of the yeah. journey. It's almost putting the equivalent well, it's going, in concept it's in the going beginning. It's going far beyond that. Okay. We are talking about organizing an end-to-end self-service process in the airport, where the passenger can walk through the whole airport guided by a system, a system that will know your data, that will have a copy of your passport, that will have a copy of your boarding pass, and that will know where you are based on your face right. or a finger. Yeah. And face and iris oh, really? definitely are right. very promising because they allow for walking, for recognition on the move, so that the process will become very smooth. And obviously, when you have a biometric identification, you're very sure about who this passenger is. For airlines, it's very interesting because they have an objective source of information indicating which passengers are in reach, for instance, to get to the gate in time. Sure. Yeah. So who are the major stakeholders in this whole chain? The very important one, obviously, is the passenger because that's, <coughs> that's the one who is using the system. But <coughs> More and more, the industry starts to realize that this concept is a matter of collaboration between many stakeholders. It's about governments being involved in helping to assure the identity and to <coughs> assess the risk of passengers. It's about airport deploying the infrastructure, making it available for the airlines. And it's about the airlines bringing their passengers in and helping their passengers <coughs> really going through a very smooth process. What about, well, I think, uh, just to add in, in the mix, the, the, you've got customs there as well, haven't you, to some extent? Uh, Can that somehow be mixed in, or are they still very much a physical presence? I, 
I think we need to make a little differentiation and sometimes there's a bit of overlap. But typically customs is a very standalone process. It's about an officer asking a person to open a bag. Sure. Yeah? Where obviously where the whole airport system will help is in providing the right information to the customs officer. But I <coughs> I quite often there's an ident there's a need for identifying. There's an, a need as well. to identify a good airport system will help to locate the passenger okay. of interest, will signal when this person is arriving at a certain point. Uh, but I think it's a bit over the edge to check or to, to put another obligation because having... It yeah, can't be, because on, it's, on, it's very arbitrary. Isn't on it? three billions of passengers sure. where there's maybe a couple of thousands that are really of interest. Absolutely, yeah, I understand. Now, putting a whole new infrastructure, I mean, a lot of airports, I travel a lot, I see, you know, the self-service kiosks, they seem to be more and more commonplace. But it must be a huge investment, a huge transformation for this, to get this whole infrastructure working on, on, a, on the grand scale that you're talking about. I mean, I draw a parallel, I, uh, you know, for example, when, when rail travel went contactless and all the stations changed, for example, in London and everything with the Oyster card. It's massive, massive investment. Um, definitely, but we don't start from zero. An airport is an environment where there's a lot of IT available. Today, it's all on manned desks, and <coughs> and the air transportation industry has worked together in defining a common use environment. Okay. And this will definitely facilitate and, and will reduce the cost of implementing more infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So you're making a very valid point. Infrastructure comes with a cost, but when you can integrate it in the existing airport platform on a common use basis, mm -hmm. one, the cost is reduced, two, all airlines all users can make use of it and share the cost and then suddenly you have a viable business case. So you almost have effectively interoperability with everybody, everyone can actually use it. The air transportation yeah. exists and is successful by using the common use environment, by sharing the infrastructure. Sure. Yeah, the time that, that an airline had his dedicated uh, desks, that, that time is long and Just gone. to touch very briefly on that note, on regulations, I mean, one assumes that there, there are standards and regulations that have to be upheld. Do they come through organizations like IATA, or, or is it very much a new, a new standards? IATA is playing a very active role, mainly in defining the processes, okay. in defining an ideal passenger flow, in working with the industry on defining how a checkpoint must look in the future. Yeah, but that's operations. I see, yeah, okay. The regulations come from the authorities. Right. And for instance, even a region that is very strict on privacy legislation in Europe, mm -hmm. not to give the name, today is taking steps on publishing directives on how PNR can be implemented really? okay. and how uh, a European-wide biometric registered traveler system should operate and that's going to be ruled by European legislation. Now can we just touch briefly on CETA's involvement in, in this whole value chain? Of course. Um, <clears throat> I mean, since the very beginning of the company we always have been working for and with the air transportation industry uh, all the big earlier yeah, or customers or our shareholders so we have a very social responsibility there. Um, and actually since about 15 years, CETA started to be involved uh, originally in helping airlines to provide passenger data to governments, which in the very early days was really not very easy because the systems were not oh, that standardized. In the meantime, CETA has become really the world leader in this kind of, of technology and we are uh, for instance, in, in the Arab region, in, in the Gulf here, uh, there's not a single country, not a single state that's not a customer of ours. And with all the data going around, you've got this whole and digital then, world. Then, yes. Yeah, and then obviously, 
uh, when, when you are in that world, it's very easy to extend your activity and say, okay, but it's more than just providing data to a border guard. Why not organizing a primary line? Why not completing your offer with e-visa? <coughs> Why not adding a biometric dimension to APP, which, for, sure. which is what we're doing? Yeah. And yeah. so stepwise, we have built a complete portfolio, and, and today we really can offer solutions to any kind of uh, problem that you see in an airport. Okay, well, that's really interesting. So thanks very much Thank for you. talking to me, and um, yeah, we'll see you next time.